Hey dudes, what's up? Welcome to Multicade Mondays. I'm your host, P-Dubs. Thanks as always for hanging out upstairs with us and for checking out the channel. We're going to have a fun show tonight. We got a lot to do, so we started just a couple of minutes early. Let's take a look and see who's in the live chat. We got Bob is here. What's going on, Bob? My man. We got Papa Brad's Gaming. Hello there. We got Hollywood Polo. What's up, man? What is... Give you a little bit of R2-D2. We got Adam Kalb. Uh, who else is here? Travis is here. If you're here, let me know. We got Harold Miller's here as well. What's up, Harold? You get a Hadouken. Hadouken! Hadouken! And of course, uh, who else is here? Ritual Dello's here. Tiger uppercut. Tiger, Tiger uppercut. That's right. There's going to be a lot of fun stuff tonight. Um... So let's have some fun, guys. Let's dive into some stuff. So uh, here, let me get some stuff up on my screen here, and then we're going to get this bad boy up and running. Let's do it, guys. Let's do it. So, All right, guys. So taking a look here at iArcade. iArcade has been killing it. They're selling out of cabinets left and right. Don't forget, this is just our quick news bit for iArcade for this week's regarding multi stuff. There's not really a whole ton going on except for their game store sales. Their game store sales are absolutely killing it. Hold on a minute. Their game store sales are absolutely killing it, guys. And what's really cool about this is if you guys are looking for, uh, what you call getting your games at discount price, they got still have a bunch of games that are 40% off. Tons of stuff that are 40% off. You'll notice a lot of the more modern games are on sale, like Wonder Boy, Retromania Wrestling, things like that, Yeez Chronicles, if you're into the Yeez series and things like that. So you guys definitely want to give that a give that a go. Um, also, uh, I've been investigating, checking things out, trying to see, are we going to have any kind of big CES announcement from iArcade? It does appear they will be participating in at CES, and it does appear, guys, they are going to be bringing some stuff to the table. I'm trying to find out what dirt I can dish. Make sure you guys stay tuned to the show. We'll see what we can reveal to you guys in the coming weeks ahead. So I'm pretty excited about that. I don't know what they're going to do. Are we going to get new cabinets, new accessories, new games, new licenses, new partnerships? Sky's the limit for iArcade. So taking a look here, guys, I wanted to uh, talk about um, our vendor of the week. Let's breeze through that, and then we're going to head over. We got we got some cool stuff planned for tonight. We're going to be talking about hidden gems on the At Games Legends Arcade Family of Ecosystem picked by the viewers, which is really, really cool, as well as uh, we got a lot of stuff about the Arcade 1-Up Big Blue Street Fighter 2 cabinet because that's our multi cade cabinet spotlight of the week. So we'll be talking a lot about that as well. Let's go full screen here for you guys so we can take a look at um what you call it at the um retro retro 530 who is our vendor of the week retro 530 all right guys i don't know if you're familiar with retro 530 or not make sure you check them out they have two they have two things you can look at you can look at Retro530.com, which is their website. I have this pulled up right now. And they also have uh, Retro530 on Etsy. But since they now have the official website up and run running, probably going to be a good idea to check out just the official Retro530.com website. And of course, they do a lot of 3D printing mods. They do marquees, cabinet covers, things like that. Let's get that off of here. And of course, one of the big things coming out. Now, I'm going to show you something that I find really interesting. Um, that this uh, Laramie Griffith guy uh, is doing. This is, I mean, this is interesting, but I don't have this cabinet. Obviously, if you guys are looking for a light-up marquee for Big Buck, he does have that available for you guys as well. And from what we're hearing from people who actually have this out in the field already, they're loving it. Heard a lot of good feedback on this product already. So just a heads up there, if you're looking for a light-up marquee for Big Buck, plus he's got these 3D printed accessories, Plus, he does light up marquees. His light up marquees look really good. They don't look washed out or anything of that nature. He does uh, the coin doors, which I have one of these. I'll have a video coming out on my channel talking about the arcade one up uh, Midway Legacy uh, coin door to put on your Midway Legacy cabinet. I just haven't installed it yet. 
so I'll have a video coming out for this very, very soon. His 3D print quality is really, really good. Sometimes people, they 3D print and it just it just doesn't look good. His stuff looks really, really good. Looks like it came out, came out of the factory that way. But what I wanted to show you guys that I saw on his website that I thought was really, really cool. And let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can find it here. We're going to have to load more. He's got all kinds of stuff. We'll zoom in here for you guys to so get a better look. You know, he's got coin doors. You know, he's got buttons, light up buttons, coin door buttons. He's got covers for your legacy cabinets. He's got covers for your regular cabinets, covers for your infinity game table, all kinds of dust covers and things. And I'll show you what caught my eye today. And this is it right here. It's only 15 bucks. And check this out, guys. I want your honest opinion, feedback, reaction. The first time I saw this was today uh, when I was uh, looking at his website, getting ready for today's show, because I definitely wanted to highlight Retro 530. And take a look here. We have an arcade one-up shelf topper. This thing will literally go on top of your cabinet right here. We'll show you some additional pictures as well. In case you wanted to get a nice little surface for mounting additional things or putting decorations up there, etc., as you can see, it's just a simple plexiglass with some really cool, probably 3D printed brackets. Take a look right there. And it's very cheap as well, uh, $15. And let's get to, I want to show you guys this. So take a look here on the back of the cabinet. That's how simple it mounts. Guys in the live chat, let me know what you're thinking of this. I actually think this is really, really cool, really innovative. It's the first time I've seen something like this myself from uh, someone in our modding community. I think this is a great idea. Look at this. He's got this on his Ninja Turtles cabinet. He's got he's got the lights in there. He's got his Ninja Turtle action figure sitting up top. Hollywood Polo says he thinks it's unique and functional. Kamla says, shelf, good God. There you guys go. Everyone's joining the show. Everyone say hi to the Rexer show. He's here. Kamla's here. Kevgret's here. This is the first time I've ever seen of it. Kevgret says there's some additional people on Etsy who sell these. But honestly, Kev, this is the first time I've seen it. And I think it's really cool. Take a look at that. And for only 15 bucks, I think I want to get one and stick it on one of my Arcade 1-Up cabinets. I just don't know which one to get yet. So let's see here. Arcade Mountain says he loves it. He thinks it's very creative. Stevie B says it's pretty cool. Bob says it's clever. He likes the topper. Really good for putting Funko Pops on. There you go. Chris, he's got his Ghostbusters cabinet. Would look pretty sweet with that AMC popcorn bucket from the Ecto-1 in Afterlife. There you guys go. I'm liking the ideas. So I think this is really cool. Uh, Laramie has been a pleasure to work with. I've talked to him off camera a number of times. I've ordered a few things from him. I have videos coming out for some of his products. Um, but when I, I just saw this today, links are in the video description below, guys, for Retro530.com. If you're looking for stuff like this, definitely give it a shot. I think that looks super sweet, me personally. I mean, because, you know, I like, I like, uh, geez, man. Hold on one second. I like decorating my arcades. What can I say? I mean, take a look back there on top of my MVSX. We got all kinds of stuff on top of there. If I got a nice flat surface, I like putting stuff on top of it. So I think that's really, really cool. Retro 530, Laramie Griffith. Uh, he's got many, many uh, great reviews uh, on his Etsy shop, as well as tons of great feedback I've seen about him and his stuff in our modding groups and Facebook groups on Reddit, things like that. I really haven't seen anyone say anything negative about his stuff or saying they have a bad um, experience or things like that. Laramie's here, guys. Here he is. Everyone give him a shout out. Laramie's here. He says he appreciates the shout out. Well, we appreciate you, sir, taking time out of your life to make our cabinets and toys even better. I think this is pretty, pretty cool. Myself, personally. Console fanboys here. Make sure you guys check out the impersonation he did of me on his channel. It was kind of funny. Uh, console fanboys here. He loves toppers. By the way, Zohar, I'm going to get you back. Just wait. You're going to love it. Papa Brad says we all collect stuff. Ray's here. He says Laramie's great. Travis is saying he's going to get an order in. Yeah, guys, links are in the video description below. Make sure you guys check all that stuff out. 
kudos to you, uh, Laramie. I'm really digging your products and uh, working with you and talking to you. You seem like a really, really good guy. And we greatly, greatly appreciate that. If you guys could put stuff on top of your arcade machine, what would it be? Like out, it's kind of dorky, but like my Retromania cabinet out in my loft, I got Toe Jam and Earl stuffed characters. We're going to call them stuffed characters. We're not going to call them plushies or dolls or anything of that nature, because that would not be masculine, and this is a masculine place that we ride in. Tiger, uppercut, Hadouken! Um, but... And then also I have like light up signs on top of those uh, um, cabinets that have those flat surfaces. I have action figures and stuff. I just I just like doing it, man. I like decorating my arcades, right? Hollywood Polo again says the Funko Pops. Dude, is that the Mario and Link tree on the MVSX? Wife got me the Link one. Yes, it is. They're both right there on top of the MVSX. That's the Super Mario Brothers and the Link um, Christmas tree decorations that we did a holiday Christmas decor show on a couple weeks ago on this channel. I like Chris's idea. Throw Shao Kahn on top of Mortal Kombat. Lava lamps. Ooh, what decade are we living in? Nostalgia? Amiibos, figures, cable guy statues. I love the Pac-Man light you bought. Thanks so much. Oh, I can't pronounce this. So, uh, Travis has got a nine inch model. I can't, I can't pronounce it. You guys always make fun of me when I pronounce words wrong, so I'm not even going to try. Comic book, holy grails, etc. Really cool. Really, really cool. I have Funko Pops on my pinball back box. Man, people love their Funko Pops. I couldn't really get into Funko Pops. You know why? Because their eyes and their faces, it's like the same, right? They just have the black eyes and like the whole concept is like they have different skin colors and costumes and maybe like some accessories in the molds and stuff, but... Just the black eyes and stuff. I couldn't. I'm not into Funko Pops. The only Funko Pops I have that I collected is over here on this wall. I have to show you guys one day. I have every single Lord of the Rings Funko Pop that was ever made. I have all of them. So I have the all of those. But minus the Lord of the Ring Funko Pops, I didn't collect any of the others. Now my son, he's got a ton of that crap in his bedroom. All kinds of random like you know characters from modern video games and things like that. Do any of you collect Funko Pops, and what brands do you collect? Throw them in the live chat here while we get our next segment prepped up and running. We would greatly, greatly appreciate that. Gumby? You collect Gumby, Harold? Come on now. Dragon Ball Z figures? There you go. Like seeing that as well. All right, we'll get some of that stuff on the screen here in just a second, guys. We need to talk about some... Stuff with the At Games products. No pops for Travis. <laughs> I love this comment by Mike. Every cabinet should come with a hot celebrity. Well, you know Mike will be the game genie. He would want it to be Alyssa Milano. Don't have a single Funko. Tupac. Man, Tupac. That's cool. That's cool. Hank used to collect Star Wars. Scott's got Rick and Morty, G.I. Joe, and He-Mans. No Funko Pops. G.I. Joe Funko Pops. All right, guys. Appreciate you guys giving me all that great feedback. It's always fun. All of us getting to know each other just a little bit better. All right, guys. Let's see if we can make some of these buttons work this time. Let's check out what's going on. And we're going to talk real quick about At Games. <music> When we're, when we're looking at At Games, guys, one thing that I find very, very interesting about At Games is, you know, you have a ton of products, right? They have a lot of products. I mean, not a ton of products. Let's just say they have an assortment of products. You know, you have your Legends Ultimate, your Legends Gamer Pro, your Legends Mini, your Legends Core, Legends Core Max, Legends Connect, Legends Pinball, and the new kid on the block is that Legends Ultimate Mini. And when you look at these arcade cabinets, yeah, they have some of these cabinets have a pretty good assortment or abundance of games. You have 300 games on the Legends Ultimate. If you bought, had the original Legends Ultimate cabinet, it had 350 games. Legends Gamer Pro, 150, 100, 120, 22, 50. Now, a lot of the licenses that um, a lot of the licenses and things that At Games has, um, you know, minus. Uh, they don't have some of those triple, triple, triple A titles, right? 
they have they have some good ones. I mean, if you look at the top 50 arcade games of all time, what the number of, of those games that are Data East or Taito, Taito, however you want to pronounce it, At Games does have those, and usually those games come included on their products as well. So that's nice. So they, they do have some of the top tier games, but not the top of the top, the tippity top, the top of the mountain top, right? And that's what they get a lot of flack on, right? But when you have so many games to try out and test, there's always going to be those goofy oddball games that, whatchamacallit, that you consider a hidden gem, right? You, you think, hey, I like playing this game. This game's a lot of fun to me. You know, this game maybe only sold 100 arcade cabinets in its lifetime, but I'm digging it. I'm loving it, right? So what I did is I put a community post on my channel because, you know, we're talking about multicades. And I asked the community on my YouTube channel, I said, hey, dudes, I said, what are some hidden gems on the At Games Arcade Family products that you play? What are the games you really like to play that are, you know, smaller titles, not as popular, but lots of fun to play? So the games I'm about to show you here are games that the community chose, that the community chose. Let's uh, let's take a look here, guys. Let's try and get some stuff up on the screen for you. So when you're looking at your At Games Legends Ultimate, these are some of the games uh, that the community uh, chose. Uh, not these. What am I doing? I put them under favorites. I had to find them and put them under favorites. So we obviously don't have time to go through every single game here, uh, but I wanted to show off. These are some of the top picks from folks who responded to my community post. So you have Asuka and Asuka, which is vertical scrolling shooter. Boogie Wings actually got a ton of votes, a ton of votes on my community post. A lot of people are really, really digging Boogie Wings. I myself really like Boogie Wings as well. I think this is a fun side scrolling shooter game. Let me know what you guys think about Boogie Wings in the the live chat. It's definitely a game worth checking out. It's built into pretty much every single at games product. Because keep in mind, some of the game, some of their stuff, some of their stuff has got uh, less games on it than others. But pretty much every single one of their products comes with Boogie Wings. So we can't really argue about Boogie Wings. Boogie Wings is a ton of fun. So definitely, if you haven't checked it out yet, check it out on your at games ecosystem. Now. Let's go ahead and let's get out of here, guys, because we do have a ton to do tonight and we want to get to everything. Let's uh, let's get back. So we have Boogie Wings and Asuka and Asuka. So this is a vertical scrolling shooter built into the At Games ecosystem. You guys, if you guys like top down vertical scrolling shooters, you might want to check this one out. And if you're wondering why we're doing this, guys, well, that's the whole point of this show. This is Multicade Mondays, man. This is the kind of stuff we talk about on this show. We're not here to talk about uh, any kind of speculation tonight. We're going to be having a lot of fun talking about some stuff here that's right here. So take a look here. Let me know if you guys have played Asuka and Asuka and what you guys think of it in the live chat. Someone put in the live comments, RB, he said EDF is better than Boogie. Well, guess what? It's there. It's in there. That's going to be on our list. But this is a fun game as well, Asuka and Asuka, so it's really hard to try and host a podcast. Plus, if you can hear the clicking of the buttons, trying to play an arcade game at the same time. That game's pretty cool to check out as well. This was my pick, Bubble Bobble. Bubble Bobble is obviously probably more of a, a higher tier game. Very popular franchise. Everyone knows Bubble Bobble. Uh, but this is the one that I picked. I absolutely love playing Bubble Bobble on all of the act games devices so guys make sure you guys check that out as well here's earth defense force so this one got a number of votes on my community post a lot of people recommended earth defense force as a hidden gem built into the at games ecosystem so let's go ahead and pop this on give you guys a quick peek see obviously we don't have time to play every single game on here so we're just going to try and fly through now let me know if you guys like um whatchamacallit if you guys like Asuka and Asuka, or if you like EDF more, which one do you like more? I think these are the only two vertical uh, shooters on here. Actually, I think this one is better than Asuka and Asuka. 
So you guys might want to definitely consider this one. But then again, they're included. It's not like you got to buy them. Just play them. No purchase necessary comes with your, comes with your products. Let you guys give that one a check-see. So we're digging that game as well. Now let's take a look at a couple of the other ones here. Obviously, Elevator Action Returns, which is usually built into almost every single Act Games product. And I love the original Elevator Action game. For some reason, the original Elevator Action game appeals to me more than Elevator Action Returns, even though Elevator Action Returns has better gameplay mechanics, better graphics, better music, better characters, better everything. Although it kind of has better everything for some reason to me, like, and also you get to choose multiple characters, etc. Although this game is a huge improvement over the original Elevator Action, for some reason it's kind of like, it's kind of like Die Hard 1, it's kind of like the first Godfather movie, it's kind of like Star Wars Episode 4. You really can't top the original, right? You really can't top the original. You know what I mean? But... Elevator Action Returns. This one got a number of votes from viewers of my channel. They said this was a hidden gem that they really enjoy playing on their At Games family of products. So definitely, if you haven't checked it out already, make sure you check it out. Again, these are included games that are already on the system. These aren't. We're not using any kind of coin ops, Raspberry Pis, or things like that. All right, we got a couple more I want to show off here because we got a lot to do tonight um so the uh, gate of doom or dark seal games so these are interesting if you like fantasy beat em up games like role playing style beat em up games like if you like games like king of dragons if you like games like um uh, dungeons and dragons uh shadow over mystera if you like knights of the round you know if you like side scrolling uh beat em up um, games. You might like this one as well. This one has more of an isometric view to it. Um, now, this one was picked by the viewers. They picked the first game. I actually like the second game more, and the reason why is you see like all these opening scenes here. The um, the, the little cutscenes in the second game are a whole ton better, right? They're more cartoony, comic book style. The sprites are bigger and better looking, and the storyline, in my opinion, of Dark Seal 2 is better than Dark Seal 1. Uh, but the uh, but still, Dark Seal 1 is a really, really fun game as well, built into your At Games arcade family of products. So let's take a look here. And of course, you have the classic, classic spinning axe. These are a lot of fun, and you build up. Just like a lot of the other role-playing, fantasy-type beat-em-up games, you build up your magic, and with that way, when you cast your spell, it'll be even more powerful, things like that. These games have a good storyline. They're very simple to play. I mean, it's just two buttons. And you get to choose between different character classes, knights and, you know, um, geez, what is it, rogues and things like that. So you guys let me know, do you guys like Dark Seal 1 or Dark Seal 2 better? I was surprised that all the viewers picked Dark Seal 1, at least those who responded to that survey over Dark Seal 2. I really like Dark Seal 2 a little bit more. It's a little more smoother than this game. But this game is still fun to play through. Do a couple playthroughs on your At Games Legends Ultimate. Here, let's just waste some magic real quick. Is it... This guy turns into this little sunflower thing and he kills guys. Kind of weird. Some of the magic spells in this game are kind of weird. Like, I think in the second game, the knight turns into a pig, if I recall. Which is kind of weird, right? <coughs> let's pull it. Let's grab this right here. Uh, let's see here. Boom. All right. Let's go ahead and let's get that on there. There. Er. Brad says Dark Seal 2 was his first YouTube video. There you guys go. Make sure you check out Papa Brad's Gaming for that. Here's the Rexer Show. He says, I say you can have fun with pretty much any game. Almost all you can have some fun. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. But we're always looking for game recommendations from our community. So uh, taking a look here. We had Plotting, which is a puzzle game. Rastan, which I think everybody kind of knows what Rastan is. And then you had Secret Agent Sly Spy, which this is that uh, 
side scrolling, um, kind of a run and gunner game. A lot of people know this game already. Uh, but here's one here, another uh, shooting game. You guys might like this is Stormblade. Let's go ahead and check this out. Viewers pick this as one of the hidden gems on the At Games arcade family of products. Let's go ahead and give this game a, a quick look see. And let's hit down and start. It's a Visco game. And we'll just pick this guy. All right. And as you can see here, here it is. Got lots of great power ups. Ah! Don't die yet. My favorite kind of vertical scrolling games are the ones where you actually get a life bar. I'm not a huge fan of the uh, one hit and you die, but hey, man, when these things were made, they were they were all made to take people's money, suck them dry. Am I right? So like, yeah, one hit, kill them. Don't give them a life bar. Make them put in more quarters. But this game's a lot of fun if you play it all the way through. I think you guys will enjoy this as well if you like those top-down shooters. Let's go ahead and get that off of there. All right, and we got to go back over here. Woohoo! Man, we got through all those, man. It took a while, but we got through most of them. What'd you guys think? Hopefully you guys appreciate some of those game recommendations. Those came from viewers of the show. Those are some of the hidden gems they recommend you play built into your At Games Arcade family of products. RB says, let's get his chat on the screen. Where did his chat go? All right, just bear. We're having a little bit of a tech issue right now here, guys. My apologies. All right, let's clear that. P Dubs is going to have me firing up a shmup by the end of this stream. Well, that's the point. Let's see here. Devil Waldo, Fix It Felix is really a hidden gem. As far as I know, it's the only legit way to play the official Disney version. It's a simple game, but I'm really glad it's there. Thanks so much, Devil Waldo. I agree. Fix It Felix is totally fun to play, and that's usually an included game on all of the At Games Arcade family of products. Do me a favor, guys. Let's jump on Devil Waldo's bandwagon before we move on to our next topic. Any hidden gems you want to throw in there? Um, some other notables that I, I got on that that I didn't have time to show you were Warlords, Zookeeper. Here's an interesting one. One of the viewers said, I absolutely love this game and to each his own. Atari Circus, which is built into some of the At Games products. I think the original Legends Ultimate Arcade cabinets that have the Atari games on them. Atari Circus. Um, he was really digging that game. Crystal Castles and Major Havoc. Those were all notable games as well. Evil Genius is here. Make sure you guys check out his YouTube channel. He says Felix is legit. Raiden or Raiden, depending on who you talk to. Throw them in the live chat, guys. Karnov's Revenge. There you go. Karnov's Revenge by Edgar. Zookeeper by Papa Brad. Gotta love Zookeeper. Zookeeper's a totally dope game as well. All right, my dudes. So we'll get a couple more in here, and then we are going to... How to Bachelors here. He says, I'm back. Feel free to resume. Thanks so much. The show can continue because How to Bachelors here. My man. My man. Sky Fox, Jason Tierney, you get a Hadouken for that. Hadouken! Human Cannonball, Millipede. Uh, yeah, the 1.0 had some sweet Atari titles. Yes, on the 1.0 cabinet, which is that one right there. And Black Widow's on there as well. All right, cool. All right, guys, so we're going to talk about um, our Arcade 1-Up Big Blue cabinet. That is our Arcade... Spotlight of the week, and man, have we got a lot of content for this cabinet tonight. Let's, uh, but you guys better buckle up. Which cabinet made the arcade spotlight of the week tonight on Multicade Mondays? Let's check it out. Uh, 
that's right, guys. It is the Arcade One Up Big Blue Cabinet. So, long story short, if you're new to the channel, you might not know this. If or if you have, if you watch me infrequently, you might not know this. But I purchased an Arcade One Up Big Blue Cabinet. Had it for about six weeks. Came broken, dead out of the box, damaged PCB board, wouldn't turn on. Had to go to Kohl's when it was on sale, buy a whole new unit. And now I and and that unit's working, and then I got this extra unit. Arcade one up finally shipped me a PCB due to arrive any day now for the other unit that's not working. But that unit I'm probably gonna have to return. Woo! Um, huge huge story. But for about the last week week and a half, uh, I've had my big blue cabinet up and running. So I figured, hey, since we have it up and running finally, we can talk about the cabinet with our real world impressions and let you guys know what we think about it. <laughs> Travis, he says he's got some great footage of Big Blue. That's because he beat me. He crushed me. I think we played best of five? I think we played, no, first of five wins, and he beat me five to one. I think I got him one time. I can't remember. Throw it in the live chat, Travis. Throw it in the live chat. All right, guys, before we dive into some of this stuff... um. What you call it? As you guys know, we have a fuzzy blue co-host, T Roll, T Roll, the professional gamer. He told me that he played Big Blue. I wasn't aware of it, and he said after playing Big Blue, he only had two words to describe this cabinet. And um, I had to put together some of our security footage here in the house to find out what the hell he was talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, for the next four minutes, get ready for the ride of your life. Here's T Roll. The professional gamer checking out the arcade one up big blue cabinet. What happens when little blue meets big blue?
As you can see, he lost his match, and uh, he wasn't too happy about that. But hey, he tried his best. What's What's really funny is that guy uh, Yun Yunfat or whatever his name username is on the Big Blue is. I don't think he realized that the reason that that character was stuck in the corner was we were literally he was literally playing with those little. <laughs> we were literally playing that way. And he's probably like, "What is this guy doing? Why is Red Ken stuck in the corner?" Yoon Fat probably thinks he got one up on me, but you didn't beat me, dude. You you beat a puppet. You you can't beat me. If you had gone against me, this is what we would have heard. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, that's T Roll, our professional gamer. That's what he wanted to let you guys know what he thought about the big blue. So yeah, the big blue, man, everyone got good. I got this cabinet later than everyone else. Everyone else is like a level 15, level 17. I'm waiting for all the other people who are just buying this cabinet like me, a little more inexperienced Street Fighter players, uh, in order to um, you know, have some competition to go against. I had a lot of fun playing with Michael B. Um, we were playing Darkstalkers, we played uh, Street Fighter games. The other night, Michael B. and I, we took a night off YouTube, and together we had a mandate on the Big Blue Arcade Gamut. We played Darkstalkers, we played Arcade 1-Up one, one Street Fighter uh, games. Uh, we also did some of the Capcom sports games. We had a lot of fun. We spent three hours on this cabinet, uh, which was really, really cool. Uh, yeah, no casuals are online. That's what uh, Kev Grud is saying. So um, we definitely uh, need uh, the community. If you guys pick up this cabinet, uh, we're going to roll a clip here. We uh, have a special interview that we want to show you guys with Rev from uh, the um, Arcade 1-Up Street Fighter Big Blue online gaming community, the retro fighting game community. Put your quarters on the glass. I did a special interview with him. We're going to roll that. We're going to talk about some things with this cabinet. Now, before we roll this clip, talking about a lot of the cool things about the cabinet, plus Rev and I dive into a couple of the opportunities for improvement. I wanted to go over some of my initial reactions to this cabinet. Just bear with me and let me get that off of the screen right there. So when I look at the Arcade 1-Up Street Fighter 2 Big Blue Arcade Cabinet, it still looks like, to, in my opinion, although it's big, although it's blue, it still looks like a giant ice scraper. But even though it's a giant ice scraper, it's hella fun to play, especially the online experience. You got the speakers aren't the best. Obviously, the controls aren't the best. And the light up marquee, it's OK. It's not nearly as washed out as some other light up marquees out there, but um, it's not as bright. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you can't really tell it's lit because it's not as bright. So maybe it's not washed out because it's not as bright as other arcade one up marquees. You know what I'm saying? Um, but minus the speakers being a little bit weak and the controls being standard arcade one up controls and the fact that, you know, this thing is looks like a giant ice scraper. Minus that, though, it's still a totally fun cabinet, especially the online gameplay experience. I might film a review video for it. I don't know. Cabinet's been out for many months. I don't even know if filming a review would be necessary at this time because, you know, who's going to watch it? Well, maybe I will. Who knows? We'll see. We'll figure it out. But, you know, uh, let's check out uh, my meeting 
with Rev. We went over a lot of stuff about this arcade cabinet. There's all kinds of links and stuff in the video description below. You guys know Rev. He's a ton of fun. Super nice guy. Let's check, let's check this out together, guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today I am joined by Rev from the Retro Fighting Game Community. Rev, thanks so much for taking time out of your busy life and joining my show. Thanks for having me, P-Dubs. How you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Really excited to have you on. This is the first time I think we've ever been on any kind of video together, and it I'm is. a big you, fan. Go ahead. It is. It is. You've actually streamed with my wife before you streamed with me, my friend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When Mrs. Kong's broke uh, B. Kong's uh, cabinet, that was that was epic. Your wife is yeah. adorable. Thank you. I've been a big fan of yours, and I've been a big fan of what you've been doing with the Arcade 1-Up online community, which we're going to dive into. But considering that today on Multicade Mondays, our Arcade Cabinet Spotlight of the Week is the Big Blue Cabinet, I wanted to catch up with you on this cabinet, because you've had this probably since day one, and you guys have been really just crushing it with the online community. So I got to say, Rev, why should people consider purchasing an Arcade 1-Up Big Blue Cabinet? Well... It's a good question. And and I want to be respectful of, you know, I, I'm cognizant of times, right? Like, I think we need to think about the spending dollar. It doesn't go as far as when you and I were younger. And, and mm -hmm. ultimately, families want to really get the best bang for their buck. And when you look at those of us who love the hobby and love the, the culture of the arcade playing those classic games, when you look for those, you look for something that's really going to bring the nostalgia back. And it's really going to touch the heart. And I think Big Blue touches not only like the casual side with like the 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 muscle bomber duos and the saturday night slam masters and the knights of the round mm -hmm. but then it also touches that you know uh mid to late 90s street fighter phase that mm -hmm. went in every arcade and it gives you three of the most classic street fighters and then it complements it with three amazing dark stalkers games which are really really fantastic titles yeah, yeah, I, I can tell you, man, um, I've only had mine working for about a week, but it's quickly becoming one of my favorite cabinets in my house. I don't know if it's the new out of the box um, feeling or if it's the fact that or if it's the fact that I actually feel like considering I called this thing a giant ice scraper when it was first announced, <laughs> although it still looks like a giant blue ice scraper, it's actually oh, yeah. a ton of fun to play. It's a ton yeah, of fun no, to play. They did, a, they did a bang up job. And I really think, you know, for those of you who are on the fence, maybe you're looking at it and you got, you got a lot of things on your list, right? You got an Xbox, you got a PlayStation, you got a, a switch, you got, maybe it's bills that you got to pay. Um, but when you look at where you're going to spend your money for your hobby, the key to this feature P dubs that I really, really liked, and this is the mm -hmm. one thing and the only reason why I buy arcade one up um, cabinets is because mm -hmm. of the online compatibility being able to actually play with another person and the ping rate is beautiful. It's, it's rollback net code. So you're getting like, you know, on average 60 ping, which is beautiful for a fighting game. You can get it down to about 32 when you're close to somebody, which is even better, but I've just been um, engrossed since, I mean, let's be honest. What is it? March of 2020 when we all kind of our lives changed forever. Right. So I think yeah. I got it in Christmas of 2019 and I live in the Midwest where there's way too much snow. You coming from Chicago. Oh, yeah. I mean, let's be real, right? So I know. Um, I know. You get dumped on, man. And I needed something to be in the basement and keep me entertained. And it was one of those things that once I got it, it was cool because there was a couple people online. And then once I got a hold of Footy Laughs and the community started growing, forget yeah. it, man. It's been, it's been a, a snowball out of control downhill since, my friend. Oh, I love that. So for those of for those who don't know, what is the retro fight gaming community that you and uh, a lot of the other guys have been working on? Yeah, thanks. That's a great question, and I appreciate it. So what it is, is it's a community of gamers who like to play together. And so as you can see from our Challenge website, Challenge is one of the different um, resources that are out there. There's a lot of different websites and organizations that can help you run events. I chose Challenge because of their partnership reasons. Um, and mm -hmm. they also allow me some freedom to do things like Knights of the Round, Race to the Finish event. So not mm -hmm. only do we have our traditional Street Fighter tournaments where you're matched up head to head, we also have our unique features like our Super Puzzle Fighter 2 tournament, where you were literally playing Super Puzzle Fighter 2, the Tetris style game in a tournament format. And that's because this community of, a, it's almost up to 60 people at this point, are highly, yeah, 58, are highly engaged, highly active. And, and they're looking forward to the next things that are constantly coming out. And actually, 
you'll notice today I'm, I'm overdue. I will be putting up the next number of events going all the way through to February 6th. So um, it'll be big updates this weekend on the site. Oh, that's that's wonderful to hear. So look forward to seeing that as well and uh, seeing what other events you have cooking. So will those events be not just with the fighting games, but with like the, the sports games and stuff included on the cabinet? Yeah, you know, P-Dubs, I'll give you a quick uh, brief overview. This is what we're looking at just for anybody mm -hmm. interested. So and we're talking, you know, depending on when you guys watch this video, right, it could be a little later. So we are um, talking January of 2022, January mm -hmm. 7th, the first Friday. We're actually going to do a Marvel versus Capcom rollament. This has been requested by the community. Every team must have Mega Man's little sister roll <laughs> on it. She's the worst <laughs> character in the game. She's absolute garbage. But for some reason, the community has been yelling at me to run this thing. So, okay. Um, for you, my friend, January 14th, our first Champions Edition event will take place from Big Blue. So that'll be our first Big Blue Street Fighter Champions Edition event. After nice. that, and we're building towards something here, my friend. After that, we're going to be doing X-Men versus Street Fighter. Then we're going to be looking at Marvel versus Superheroes. Then we're going to be looking at a Marvel versus Capcom tournament with thousands of dollars in prize support, which will be happening on February 6th. It's a Sunday. That's These awesome. events take long times to do, but we are talking major prize support and major guests. It's going to be, that's like, that's like, man, I, I, I walk away from yeah. those events and it's just, uh, it's such a good feeling afterwards. So it's awesome. With Nice of the Round being uh, the one coming up very, very soon, what kind of, are there going to be prizes for that one? Yeah, there are. So currently the prize support is up to $70, which means you're looking at $35 for each team that wins first place, right? So you have a team of two. Mm -hmm. And so $35 between the two. Now there is donations for anybody who wants to make the prize more, more richer. You obviously can, um, you can go into the sign up, and you can read through. We'll have like a donation page on the night, but the idea being, uh, it's a little more fun when people want to scrape together 35 bucks, that'll pay for a button upgrade for your first player on your big blue. Right. So you can go, there you get go. all your industrial <laughs> Lorenzo buttons. So it's a, good, it's a good idea, my friend. And, and actually thinking of, you know, you highlighted one of the one of the partners in the community that I use as a customer is DIY Retro. You know, yep. take that money and go upgrade your big blue. I promise you it'll be worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely need to do that now that I got my unit up and running. Um, but despite the fact that this cabinet, just like any product out there, Rev, uh, this product does have opportunities for improvement, just like anything else in this world. Uh, I've noticed some, which we'll be covering during this uh, uh, Multicade Mondays broadcast, as well as during my review. But in regards to the online play, what opportunities for improvement do you see there that we would love to see, let's just say, Arcade 1-Up send out? What's really cool about these machines is they're Wi-Fi enabled. Would love to see some firmware updates and kind of make that lobby and matchmaking system a little bit better. What would you like to see uh, come out from them uh, on this yeah. cabinet? Great question, man. Great question. And, and um, make no mistake, I think, you know, John and I have talked about our feelings on this and I'm going to be I'm gonna be brutal, right? So first and foremost, it's the thing staring you in the face when you're playing it. We have a port for a, a headset to be used for speaking. And the, the speaking is working technically on NBA Jam. Let's go with that firmware update on Big Blue, right? Big Blue voice communication should be one of the first things that they are working on to roll that out since it's pre-existing software that they're engaged with. Number one. Number two, they have to create a better UI function. Now, mm -hmm. I don't want to steal thunder. And I really think, I, I, while I may have been one of the loudest voices and squeakiest wheels about it, there's a gentleman in the community named Jacob Romero who has a YouTube video. And when you look him up, it's like R-M-R-O or something. He spells his name unique, but he did a review of what the potential UI system could be for Big Blue. And it has the it has the put your quarters on the glass seal of approval. It is, oh, really? Uh, it is phenomenal. It's a single interface where everyone can view and you can go from game to game without having to jump screens. It was just like, oh, perfect. There's six people in Street Fighter it's Champions Edition, and these are the rooms, and these are the open lobbies. You knew it. It wasn't a guess. It wasn't a time consumption. There was no loading screen to loading screen to loading screen. It was just very, very intuitive. And also, you know, it takes a mind from outside the box to think like this, but the way he talks to 
the layout and, and actual design that Arcade 1UP has used on the screen itself, it mm -hmm. is cluttered. And it doesn't make sense the way they have it laid out. And the way that he proposes to just position things and why the Marvel uh, button or the Marvel uh, logos here and the Arcade One Up logos here, it's it's something that I really hope Arcade One Up takes seriously, and I hope someone like their you know their dev team really uh, gives that guy a call because he deserves it. Yeah, I'll I'll put a link to that in the video description below as well. That way you guys can check it out. Let us know your honest feedback. I look forward and agree that we need to see some of those updates as well to that online matchmaking system to make it as great of an experience as possible. Um, overall, it's been a fun cabinet to have, and I'm really enjoying covering it on this episode. Rev, I cannot thank you enough for taking time out of your day to spend a few minutes with myself and viewers of the Multicade Monday show to talk a little bit more about this cabinet, which is our spotlight of the week. All right, guys, special shout out and uh, thanks to Rev uh, for hanging out with me yesterday and uh, doing that interview. It was really cool to meet him and get his perspective on things. And yeah, the online system here definitely needs a little bit of improvement. They have a cool, you know, they have a lobby and you're able to create rooms and you could even make private rooms and things like that. But some of the features and stuff that you can do on other cabinets, like have friends like NBA Jam and, and also uh, being able to... Um, block people and things like that, you know, um, ignore people, things like, like you can't do that yet. So, but what's cool about these cabinets being Wi-Fi enabled is arcade one up. I hope you're listening. I hope they do some firmware updates and, and just flush it out more, man. Just add some more features, make it an even better experience for everyone else. Rev's really cool. If you guys enjoyed that, uh, put, uh, put those comments in the chat. I'm already seeing some people saying Rev is so great. My apologies if his mic was a little soft there. Uh, we didn't notice that until it was too late uh, and we weren't able to fix it. But hey, man, I'm just an average YouTuber. <laughs> We're not doing a high, va high value production here, which is really, really cool. Uh, Rev and New are great people. Yes, they are. Make sure you guys check out Put Your Quarters on the Glass on YouTube. Give them a subscribe, especially if you're into all that stuff. And Rev, when I meet you online, man. Hadouken! We're going to Hadouken you. All right, guys, let's uh, let's continue on here. So I, I, I'm digging the cabinet. I mean, I'm really digging the fact that I got it for the Kohl's deal. Like, I got it at Walmart, and I think I paid full. Did I pay full price, or did I get a sale? I can't even remember. It was six weeks. Whatever the price was at Walmart six weeks ago is what I paid for it. The Kohl's deal makes it better because the cabinet was 500 bucks plus we got $150 in Kohl's cash, which I gave to my wife, right? So, but for 500 bucks, which is, you know, as you guys know, it's the line in the sand that we might gently, gently put a toe over from time to time, but never officially break. Um, for 500 bucks, totally fun, totally fun. And if you have, uh, if you're into Street Fighter and stuff, totally worth it, in my opinion. And all that kinds of stuff. Yes, uh, his Friday night streams are hilarious. If you guys like, uh, I was talking with Rev before we started recording. He reminds me of um, back when I was younger and I would watch Monday Night Raw. And it would be Jesse the Body Ventura. And then it would also be... Oh, thanks so much for that, uh, Jester. Um, I, Jesse the Body Ventura and Vince McMahon, right? Like doing color commentary. And he's like a combination of both, right? He's like he's like the play-by-play -play man plus the color commentator mixed in together, right? Because he's got the knowledge, plus he'll be like, boom, shakalaka. You know what I mean? Thanks so much for the $5 super chat from Jaster. Just wanted to say thanks for all you do, Patrick. We got a lot of stuff cooking. How many of you picked up your Arcade 1-Up Tempest Atari legacy cabinets today, man. Those are still, are they still 250 or did they sell out? Did they sell out guys? A lot of YouTubers were posting links and videos hyping the fact that that cabinet went on sale. Uh, it's kind of funny. I was, I was talking to a couple of my YouTube buddies off air and I said, you know, what's funny is I did a review of the Atari legacy cabinet a couple months ago, a few months ago. And when I did that review, you know, it got like 10,000, 11,000 views, something like that. And it's, it, it sits there and, and like every day it maybe gets like 
30 to 50 views a day because, you know, it sits there and YouTube pushes it out or maybe people go back and rewatch it. I know sometimes I do watch reviews more than once if I really like the way a content creator did a, a product. You, you can't help it, right? But my review for that cabinet today, check this out, guys. I was checking my YouTube channel. I got 586 views today on that video. So that goes to show you people were all over YouTube today like, there's a sale? Maybe I should watch a review for the product. That video got 586 views today because people were looking for that information. Console Fanboy, $10 Super Chat. P-dubs, for you being a good sport, please be gentle. So yes, Console Fanboy did do a video where he impersonated me on his channel. Um, it was it was pretty it was pretty funny. It was pretty funny, but I told him I was gonna get him back and I know just what to do, and don't worry. I'm not gonna be mean, but it's hilarious. It's hilarious. I'm totally gonna get him back. All right, let's see what people did. Did, did you get your arcade one up, Tempest? I uh I picked up Tempest on PS4 for $29.99. There you go. Save yourself 220 bucks. Just buy it on the PS4. Uh, no more 250. He missed out. It sounds like they sold. Oh, Amazon sold out. Man, word spread. Wait, the Atari Legacy uh, is on sale. I didn't see the 300 posts about it. Yeah. Well, you know what happens is a lot of YouTubers, you know, they share their Amazon affiliate links, right? So if you click on it, they get a little kickback from Amazon. But keep in mind, guys, the kickbacks are so small. Tiny, tiny. You could buy a $50 product from Amazon that I refer you to and I might get five cents. You know what I mean? Like, it's ridiculous. Um, I didn't share any links to it because uh, I was tied up with my day job. I didn't even know about it until it was like almost over. Travis says he already had one. Walmart still has them. I mean, 283 is still a good deal. I mean, 283 is still a good deal. Conti grabbed one. FOMO hit. Uh, Donut says he heard. I think he was trying to say heard. I had the 10. Oh, wait, no. I had the Tempest. Wasn't that great, but to each his own. So it sounds like he got rid of his. Uh, let's see here. Was on the fence for Tempest, but now that it's under 300, he had to jump. Holy cow. He had to jump. Atari 12 and 1 with BBS upgrade is still better. There you guys go. Yeah, so he's talking about the original arcade one up Atari 12 in 1 cabinet which has Lunar Lander on it, as well as um, it was completely out-of-the-box compatible with Glenn's Retro Show Spinner and Trackball. And on this new cabinet, the trackball's working. Glenn, I think, is work still working on a way to get the spinner working, but he hasn't like officially released it. I'm going to have to check in with Glenn and see where he is on that for people if they wanted to upgrade to his spinner. The one thing I didn't like, uh, Harold, about the original Atari 12-in-1 cab from Arcade 1-Up is that it did not save high scores on all the games. And on the uh, 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 Atari Legacy Tempest cabinet, which I have out there, it does save high scores on every single game, which is really, really cool. Got to save those scores. Minus that, um, there you go. Yes, console fanboy, that does count. Uh, $29.99. Donuts, has anyone bought the Defender of Galaga Legacy clearance? So yeah, um, I think Walmart also put the Defender and the Galaga, which are Legacy cabinets reskinned. So it's the Bandai Namco cabinet reskinned as a Galaga cabinet. Like they put, they marked that one down as well. I think they knocked another hundred bucks off that cabinet. Like I got the class of eighty one. That's all I need. I just need a new marquee for it. Uh, let's see here. Conti, this is an excellent point. 250 is way under Generation 1 prices if you factor in the marquee and the riser. That's so true, because think about it. When the cabinets are 300 bucks, we didn't get a light-up marquee, nor did we get a riser with the cabinet. Excellent point. Excellent point. Uh, Zod Rider says, what did you put in your MVSX P-dubs? So what I have, uh, on my MVSX back there, I actually have that, um, I did a review for it. We've been showing it off a few times on the channel, that little Devoom, my Devoom 64 tablet thing. Um, I just stuck that in there because the cabinet's currently unplugged, uh, and I wanted to have something on the screen. So I got that Devoom screen 
on there or just doing a rotating a bunch of arcade images. I thought you guys might like that in the background, even though it's probably a little blurry because the camera focus is all right here. MK Legacy is 350 at Best Buy. I got the Defender Party Kit for 199. Any other deals out there, guys, that we should be sharing with each other as a community? Throw them in the live chat. Share the knowledge, guys. Share the wealth. It's end of the year at my day job, guys. So I'm yeah, you know, way too busy to keep up with every little thing going on. Every little thing that's going on right now. It's an amazing deal for what you're getting, console fanboy. Chris F. says he almost bought the Atari Legacy today. He passed. He's holding out for the new CES announcement, hoping that wasn't a mistake. Not much room left. Well, I mean, Arcade 1UP is not, and Tastemakers are not officially listed as vendors at CES. I mean, if you look at the CES vendor listings, Arcade 1UP and Tastemakers aren't on there. Are they going to CES? Are they not going to CES? It makes me think that maybe they're possibly sitting the CES out, as in participating in the event, probably maybe due to COVID and all that stuff still. There's still a lot of restrictions in uh, the Las Vegas area, mask mandates, etc. Maybe, but that doesn't mean it won't prevent them from still making announcements during that week, since a lot of people will be looking for that kind of information that week, right? So... We'll see. Or maybe they're there and I don't know why I don't know why they're not listed as a vendor. I'm expecting them, whether they actually participate in CES or not, I'm expecting them the week of CES to, to make announcements or leak information. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's just a couple of press releases like they did last year I'm not, um, at the last uh, E3 and stuff or just they sent out just some press releases, right? <laughs> Um, and all that stuff. Uh, CES is, uh, what is that? First week of January? Is it the 5th through the 9th? Something like that? I'll have to double check. Tastemakers presents Killer Instinct. Now, here's what I hope they do. Like, at the very least, they have a YouTube channel. They have a website. They have an Instagram. They have a Twitter. They have social media. And they have a pretty good chunk of followers on every single platform. So Arcade 1UP, I implore you, make this fun, make this exciting for us. If you're going to announce anything during the month of January, give us that, that experience we had. You guys remember the, the my favorite moment of being an Arcade 1UP fan was when they lifted the sheet on the Star Wars cabinet and revealed Star Wars, and that didn't get really leaked out. It was a huge surprise, and we all became little kids again. It was an amazing moment. You know what I mean? Like I, my eyes welled up a bit. I didn't cry. I didn't cry. My eyes welled up a little bit, but I, let me know if you guys kind of felt the same. That was an amazing moment. And that's what it's all about, right? Make this fun for us. If you're not going to participate and put on a big show there at CES, do your own thing, man. Get a video production crew in, record some video of these new cabinets, get John D, get Scott Bacharach, get them in front of these cabinets and show these cabinets off in a video, publish it on your YouTube channel, publish it on your webpage, publish it on your Twitter, on your Facebook. Don't just send a press release out to, you know, Geek Gamer Magazine or whatever magazine company, and then we all just read a stupid article, and then we all have to make YouTube videos for it, blah, 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 blah. Let me know if you guys agree with me or not. Arcade went up. If you're not going to go, if you're not going to go to CES, at least make it fun for us using your social media platform. Do not mail it in like you did for E3 and the uh, the other conference that was right around E3 as well. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, no leaks. I don't want leaks. I don't want whoever at Arcade went up sent out all the leak emails last year. Please don't. Don't send out any leak emails ju just to get free YouTube advertisements. For the love of God, just put on a show. They stink at marketing, plain and simple. Uh, I think that they're, they don't know, like, <laughs> they hired this new marketing guy and maybe he just doesn't get it, right? Maybe he just doesn't get it. So, would they have another 30-foot giant cab? I mean, yeah, I'd love to see the 30-foot giant cabs. The NBA Jam. Will CES be virtual? Uh, as of today, I'm hearing both, that they're doing both. 
there's rumors the physical CES might get canceled, but those are just rumors. It hasn't been uh, solidified yet. Uh, will there be an At Games Legends Ultimate 2.0 cabinet announced? I don't think so. In fact, during CES, I don't think At Games is going to announce anything. Um, if At Games is going to announce anything, it'll be during February, during their National Owners Day. Um, that's usually when they like to make their announcement, because then all eyes are on them. Otherwise, they'll just get swallowed up amongst all the other news. I miss Randy's records. There you go. Leaks are laziness. Make a cool video. I think some people are agreeing with my sentiments on the uh, Arcade One Up marketing campaign. <laughs> the only thing that will get me excited is if they announce a sports station, NFL Blitz, and NBA Showtime. Well, that would be interesting. That would be interesting. Uh, let's see here. Let's put this on the chat. I don't have this cabinet, but he's saying discs, uh, Sony 4K, Disc of Tron, a track mode freezes after 30 minutes. It's happening to a lot of people. Please let John D know about this. Well, John D, if you happen to catch my show, there's some feedback here. I don't know, guys, is this happening to anyone else? Is your track mode freezing? And if it is, could you push out a firmware update, which is the whole point of these things being Wi-Fi enabled, and patch that and fix that? More lockdowns equals restriction coming. Who knows how it will affect CES? Yes. Donuts would love a re-release of Burger Time and Star Wars. I think so. Either re-release Star Wars or just give us Star Wars Trilogy, which we've talked about on the Super Game Room Dudes a bunch. Uh, there are rumors at Games is making a faster board. Uh, well, I mean, you have the Legends Core Max coming out, guys, and I don't think I think that's what what's coming out. The Legends Core Max. <laughs> Let's see here. Well, ultimately, they like all their pro products to be powered as the same board as the ALP. Yeah, that would be nice. I think they're talking about at games. Thanks, P-Dubs. Oh, you're most welcome. Happy to share that. I mean, I don't know if John watches my show or not. I, I know he does occasionally. So if he catches this, maybe maybe he'll know. At Games made an amazing multicade that plays thousands of games. There's not much they need to do if you just want to play games. That's true. You can run pretty much almost out like 2,000 arcade games on there and have a good experience. All via USB. No, the Legends Core Max is not going to play Killer Instinct. Uh, how much RAM is on the Core Max? Two gigabytes? I think so. I don't have the spec sheet in front of me. Um, I'll dig that out and we'll have to do a video about that. All right, my dudes. So, uh, overall guys, make sure you guys check out retro 530com for your arcade one up body needs. He's got a lot of good stuff on there, especially if you're looking for something simple, such as, uh, covers and marquees and things like that. I really like that shelf. If you've been here since the show started, I'm really digging that shelf. I think I want to order one of those. Just to test one out, stick it on one of my arcade one-ups. And then, of course, uh, his coin door molds, which are really cool. I'll have a video coming out for that as well. Make sure you guys check out Retro 530. Make sure you guys uh, check out and consider the arcade one-up Big Blue Cabinet, especially if you're into online gaming and uh, being part of this online fighting community that this community is building, which is really cool. I'm really happy and proud of these guys and all the stuff they're doing. I mean, guys... It, some people might just write it off and say, oh, that's stupid. Uh, those guys are stupid. They're stupid. But guys, what they're doing is it's pretty impressive and it takes a lot of work and a lot of passion and a lot of energy and sometimes a lot of money as well to make something like this happen, you know, creating these tournaments and creating these events and things like that. So all I have all the respect in the world for Rev, uh, Footy Laughs, and all those guys over there um, in the, uh, the retro fighting game community. Make sure you guys check that out. Uh, next week, uh, we were going to do it this week, but I, I knew we had a lot to do with this big blue cabinet. Next week, we'll do some uh, Raspberry Pi stuff, so hopefully you guys will come back for that. Next week will be our last show of the year. Yes, I know it's only episode three, but guess what? It's the holidays coming, and I perfectly plan on taking the week of Christmas and the week of New Year's off YouTube. I uh, definitely want to spend quality time the last two weeks of the year with my family and actually spend time playing all these games. 
I actually am going to push myself to have time to play all these games instead of just making videos for them. So I'm pretty excited about that. If you enjoyed tonight's podcast episode, do me a favor. Give us a thumbs up on the way out. And as you head over to Michael B. The Game Genie Show, tell him Pete up sent you. And that the Multicade Maniacs or the Monday out, oh, the Monday Maniacs are doing a live stream raid and we're heading over. Uh, hold on real quick, guys. Uh, we got a, a $5 super chat from Jason. He just wanted us to know we are legit. There you go. Let's talk more play. That's what it's all about, baby. I've made so many YouTube videos this year. I'm ready to actually play games. So, all right, guys, make sure you share the show with your friends. If you liked it, follow me on all my social media platforms. Links are in the video description below. Give us a thumbs up on the way out next week. Raspberry Pies and our arcade. Uh, we're going to end the year with our arcade spotlight is going to be. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. We'll see. Maybe it'll be a surprise. I don't know. I honestly don't know. <laughs> we'll figure it out. All right, my dudes. Tell Michael B. I said hi. You guys have a great night. Thanks for giving me some of your time, and we'll be talking real soon. <laughs>